Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Claire, and I'm from China. Uh, thank you for this opportunity for me to introduce my uh, uh, my market and our consumers to to you. And first of all, let me have a little uh, introduction of my uh, company. Our company name is uh, Wisdom Asia, which means that we hope to provide intelligence to the clients all over the Asia region. Uh, we are located in Shanghai, and we have around 20 um, or above um, employees, and um, about 15 to 16 of them are research professionals covering um, qualitative or quantitative uh, services. Um, our expertise are in FMCG category. As you will see that we have been conducting uh, various types of research studies for our clients. For example, when our client is going to introduce a new product to the market, we will do market segmentation for them to help them understand which is their target, target consumers and what opportunity they have in this market. And along with the client's uh, product development process, we are doing product tests, concept tests, packaging, and advertising tests for our clients to help them refine the product and the communication strategies. When they have uh, launched the product to the market, we also help them to understand how the product or brand perform in the market, and we can help them to evaluate the campaign effectiveness of the uh, when it's brought into the market. On the other hand, we also have some continuous tracking uh, service provided to our clients. That's the uh, major uh, studies that we, we are doing now for our clients in, in China. Um, and now you will see that we have, um, China is very big, but we have strong resources to conduct interviews uh, from urban cities to the rural areas in China. And it's, uh, we're also capable of doing all types of methodologies. We can use face-to-face uh, -face interviews. We also do uh, CATI uh, or CAPI. Uh, now, uh, online um, survey is also very uh, popular and, and growing in, in China market. And we are also capable of doing this. So if you have a chance to visit uh, Shanghai, please uh, drop by and have visits of our office. Um, so next, I would um, I would talk something about the Chinese consumers. You know, the uh, economic of China is growing in the past few years. As we can see, that the GDP of China um, is growing at around 10.5 percent every year on average. Um, accordingly. Uh, the household disposable income in China is also increasing by 13.3% every year. So therefore, uh, China has become the second largest consumption uh, FMCG market, just closely following the US market. So um, every manufacturers are keen on the China market. And um, when we are talking about China market, usually we, first of all, need to need to divide the market from two different angles. One is from the regions, because China is, is big. Usually we uh, classify the, the markets by the regions from, uh, we have western market, um, eastern areas, northern and southern areas. On the other hand, we also look at the China market uh, from different city tiers. We uh, divide them by either government administrative hierarchy or the uh, ec um, ec economy development. We have tier one city to tier five. For example, tier one city covers Shanghai, Beijing, and Guangzhou. And tier two refers to those provincial capital cities such like Hangzhou, Chengdu, or Nanjing. They, um, the economic in these cities may not be as, uh, as 
good as, as developed as the tier one cities, but they are growing very fast and they are the target mar markets of many of our clients. And um, if we go to um, lower tier cities from three to five tiers, you may find the situation is, um, is different. Um, the distribution channels, um, their shopping behaviors, um, there lies some difference in the, in the China market. So the implication is, um, if uh, we are going to do business, to carry out a new business in China, we may need to get it clear that what types of market that we are going to target to. So first of all, uh, let me introduce something about the, the channel. Um, where, does, where do our um, consumers usually shop um, in their daily life? Hypermarkets and supermarkets are still the common ways for the Chinese consumers. It's, um, when, uh, if you are going to a uh, tier one cities like Beijing or Shanghai, uh, actually you will find that the convenience store are also very, very salient, very popular there. But it's not the same case in the lower tier cities. Uh, you may see in the, in the picture, Um, there will not be any difference of the hypermarket in, in China with uh, Asian cities, but uh, supermarket you will find the scale is smaller. It's about uh, uh, 1,000 square meters for a supermarket in residential area. And this one is interesting. This is a, a small grocery store in lower tier cities or the rural area like village or town. But this is the uh, very important channel for the um, residents in rural or uh, lower tier cities uh, to, to buy the, uh, the goods, uh, the product they, they need to use every day. Uh, on the other hand, I would like to mention that online purchasing is on the rise in China, but it is not, uh, only noticed in like Shanghai and Beijing, that big cities, and the proportion is, is very small. I think it would be less than 5% of the total uh, consumption value. Um, next, I want to say something about the brand selection among the Chinese consumers. Um, actually, there are two different types of consumers in China. We call them uh, uh, one batch of consumers, we call them multi-brand adorers, because they always tend to choose from different brands in one category when their purchase frequency of this category is growing up. But on the other hand, there is another um, a proportion of consumers which is always sticking to one brand. We call them loyalty brand stickers. There are two different types of consumers in China, but uh, the majority of Chinese consumers are multi-brand adorers especially in tier one and tier two, these big cities. Because in these cities, the modern trade channel are very developed. Uh, there are many uh, hypermarkets and supermarkets and convenience stores in these cities, which provides the consumers uh, more choices and different varieties to, um, to, to shop. Um, but on the other hand, um, for the loyalty brand stickers, there is not so much difference across different tiers. So uh, let's look at these two different types of consumers in another angle. Um, we look at them by different categories, by different FMCG products. You may see that um, in certain FMCG categories, such as biscuits, candy, uh, personal care products, cosmetic products, detergent products, there are more uh, multi-brand adorers than the loyalty brand stickers. Because manufacturers, many brands, are competing with each other in these areas, and they are all trying to attract the attention from consumers by carrying out different marketing uh, communications to uh, roll out different uh, new products. So um, the, the consumers uh, always tend to swing between different brands. 
But it's also very interest, interesting to us to find that um, there are certain few categories that lies very loyalty consumers. But what are these categories? It's milk, infant milk powders, diapers, beer, and gum. You will find that three of these categories actually are related to kids, related, related to babies. It is about, um, about the food security issue in, in China. Actually, consumers in China, they, they are, still have concern on the food quality. So once they, um, they try the brand and found it is reliable, um, and it's suitable for their baby, they will stick to the brand, and it's not likely, it's hardly for them to change. You will find um, another uh, category, which is, which is beer. Beer, um, of course, is different from the kids' product, but why it, is, has, why it has such um, um, high loyalty? Because um, um, owing to the different region, actually, the brewery, the brewery of the beer is uh, limited to the, each region of China. For example, in, uh, in Shanghai, my daddy's favorite beer brand is Santori, because Santori is the uh, biggest brand in East area. But if you go to uh, Beijing um, or the northern area, the, the, the famous beer brand may be um, Harbin or uh, Yanjing. Yanjing. Uh, my daddy will never have a chance to try the other two uh, brands, but he is very loyal to, to the local brands like, uh, like uh, Santori. Um, as I said, uh, um, each uh, manufacturer is going to uh, attract attention from the, con from the consumers. That's why the competition among the brands, especially between local brands and uh, imported brands, are very severe in China uh, consumer goods market. You will see that um, just beside, for example, just beside the brand Coca-Cola, um, you will see this Chinese brand, which is a herbal tea. Herbal tea in China, which is very popular now. Herbal tea in China is associated with cooling down, reducing the heatness. And this, pro this brand almost has been able to penetrate to every um, hot pot, chain hot pot restaurant. So when people are having hot pot, you know it's very spicy and many, many foods. People always um, um, have um, herbal tea and they will choose this brand. So this brand is, very, is a very successful Chinese um, beverage brand. Um, we also find other cases in, in, in beer industry and uh, cosmetics and detergent products as, as well as uh, the food and confectionery uh, industry. The situation is very similar. So um, the local brands uh, and the imported brands are keep competing with each other, but on the other hand, they are also learning from each other. Um, the strength of the local brands is they have better uh, understanding of the local consumers, and they have very strong distribution and delivery channel. And more importantly, they have strong cap um, capability in dealing with the uh, traditional trade channels. In terms of uh, traditional trade channels, I mean the, the groceries, the small grocery store I just uh, show, showed before. Because if you are going to sell a product to a, to a hypermarket like Walmart, you only need to go to the central merchandising team of Walmart and say, hey, I want to sell this product to the China market, and uh, can we have a deal on that? But if you are going to sell it to very low tier cities, you have to go to the small stores one by one and talk to each small store owners. But um, some of the local kinds are doing in this way. So that's why they have a very strong network in lower tier cities or in the rural areas. But uh, what the advantage that the imported brands have, uh, they have very good in, uh, reputation and credibility. That's why um, um, many of the Chinese consumers like to choose imported brands instead of the local brands because it is a guarantee of quality. And um, the, um, the, the speed of carrying out inno innovation is faster than the local brands. And um, they always have um, uh, 
they are keen on the um, brand, bold, brand building and always carry out uh, marketing communication to attract the uh, consumers. Um, on the other hand, they have better management of the modern trade channel. So you will see in the um, first or in the tier one and tier two cities where the modern trade channel is, is more, uh, um, more salient, actually, and, and the important brands are doing very well, or maybe better than the local brands. But the situation may not be the same when we go to a lower tier cities in China. So uh, now I will zoom into the China beverage market and give you some um, idea about the China market, uh, beverage market. Um, um, I would say that it is an emerging market in China in terms of beverage because the market value is very large and we are, interest, it's in, uh, we are interesting find, to find that the top three um, um, flavor that I liked by uh, Chinese consumers are orange, plain and lemon because we include bottled water. Um, and the top three claims by the brands, by the beverage brands are uh, no additives, preservatives, or low reduced sugar, or vitamin or mineral fortified. And you will see that all these claims are, are related to healthy perceptions because uh, Chinese consumers um, uh, are looking for a very uh, healthy product from the, ve from the beverage. So you will see that actually in China, the category of uh, juice and RTD is growing, but the sparkling is, is going down in, in recent years because um, um, people will think that sparkling is not that healthy because um, um, there might be some um, ad um, additives in it and it's too sweet. But for juice, you will see like Miname and some uh, brands from Taiwan, like Uni President and Kang Shifu Master Kong, which is very uh, popular in, in China. So I would say that challenge and the opportunities lies in the beverage ca category goes to um, uh, juice and RTDT. For juice, the market value is very large. It's the third largest category um, in China. And this category is able to command uh, higher prices than the other beverage categories because of its nutrition content. And another promise, promising category is RTD uh, packaged tea. Because Chinese consumers are very, very familiar with tea products. So um, it, will, it may save your effort to, for education that this kind of product has a very particular benefit. For example, if I talk to a consumer in China about chrysanthemum tea, Chrysanthemum tea is, can be intuitively associated with cooling down and reducing heatness. So there will be no education to the consumers if you roll out such a product in China market. Um, because the, the functional and um, um, healthy claims are already are readily accepted by the Chinese consumers. But there is also some challenges if you are going to the China beverage market. The first, all, first of all is, is the cost. So along with the growing of the uh, economy, the, the rental cost, the cost of raw material is also growing very fast. And on the other hand, and, uh, the second point is um, the logistics. As uh, I mentioned before, that the, um, the, the region is diversified and China market is very huge, so you have to um, focus your resources and sort out the uh, figure out the, the, the solutions for logistics before you enter into this market. Um, uh, another point is um, the, import, the imported product and imported brand uh, actually is now challenging the uh, local brand and local, uh, local consumption markets. Uh, then I would like to uh, say something about the distribution channel and uh, the retail channels. Um, Coco, an abbreviation of China Oil and Foodstuffs Corporation, uh, I would say um, maybe the biggest uh, distributor in China, but it is a, a state-owned 
state-owned um, group company, uh, which play a very important role in bridging the market between the China and, and the other countries. Um, if it comes to the retail channels, actually in China, the retail channels can be separate into two different types. One is the international brand, international uh, hypermarkets, including, of course, Lotus and uh, Warma, Carrefour, and Atima. Atima is from Taiwan. It's from Taiwan, but it's doing very well. And another type of uh, um, hypermarkets and supermarkets is state-owned, uh, which is um, uh, Vanguard and Lianhua. If you have uh, visited uh, China, you may see uh, these two um, are very popular um, uh, hyper and supermarkets in China. Um, in terms of the, um, the restaurant, the food retails, actually uh, uh, I can only uh, talk uh, a little, a small part of it because the dishes, the Chinese food is very diversified in, uh, is very diversified because when you go to uh, Sichuan or Yunnan or Hunan, these western areas, you will find the food there is very, very spicy. But if you go to Guangdong, the southern area, actually uh, what they have is very light in taste. But uh, when you come to, uh, if you come to Shanghai, uh, you will find that the taste preference in Shanghai is inclined to be sweet. So uh, uh, now I, I can um, just uh, introduce a, a, a very uh, popular chain uh, fast food uh, restaurant in, in China to you. They served uh, traditional Chinese food. They serve steamed rice with, with dishes. Uh, actually, um, um, the outlets of Zhen Gong Fu is not as many as that of um, KFC or McDonald's, um, but the healthy perception is very strong among the consumer's mind. So sometimes consumer will choose when they uh, uh, when they're going to have something not that uh, they, if they are don't if they are not like to uh, uh, have some junk food they will go to Zhen Gong Fu to have some Chinese fast food. So you will see actually the decoration in the in the store is very modern and the, the price of set menu is cheaper than McDonald's or, or KFC. Uh, another restaurant I would like to introduce to you uh, is called Hai Di Lao. It is a chain hot pot restaurant in, in China. Um, they serve good food, but um, the different thing is they serve even better service to the consumers. Because when uh, you are waiting for the tables at the, uh, at the restaurant, they will provide many service to you. Uh, for the female customers, they will give you manual care service. For the kids, they will give you some computers to play games. And they even have the table games and chess games for you. So um, the customers is actually um, glad to wait at their restaurant. So um, the reason that I choose this two examples introduced to you is that um, if we are going to do any business in the um, retail or the food industries, we must make sure that we provide the relevant service or product to our consumers. And on the other hand, we must do something differently from what the other brands are doing now. So that would be the uh, situation in China market. Thank you.